I want to talk today about what is a geometry kernel and why it matters for plasticity. So a geometry kernel is a software library for performing geometric calculations on surfaces and volumes. For example, it can compute the intersection of two surfaces and it can produce a fillet that is a blending surface that is continuous to two adjacent surfaces. In general, these algorithms are extremely difficult to make correct. It takes teams of engineers and mathematicians like dozens of years to make a robust geometry kernel that is useful for like making a car or an airplane or an iPhone or something like that. So historically, the kernel industry has been dominated by two products, Parasolid and Asus. Um, they both got their start in the early 80s, and most popular CAD programs like SolidWorks, SpaceClaim, Shaper 3D use one of these two kernels. Even Fusion 360 uses a descendant of Asus that Autodesk um, forked off 20 years ago. Both Asus and Parasolid are very powerful and mature, but in certain ways they're also very old-fashioned. I mean, they're literally 40-year-old code bases, and I believe even uh, that Parasolid is written in Lisp and transpiled to C. And you can see, just kind of skimming some of my C++ code interacting with Parasolid here, um, just kind of how old-fashioned this library is. There are some uh, newer alternative geometry kernels that are quite good. And in fact, Plasticity uses C3D, which is a quote-unquote newer geometry kernel from Russia. I say new, but it's probably 15 to 20 years old. Um, C3D is very good, but because it's new, it's missing a lot of features, especially around direct modeling, which is the core functionality of plasticity. Let's say I create a cylinder here. Let's give it like two meter radius. And right here, I'll put another sphere that's like one, one meter radius. Now, if we uh, union these together and fill at this edge, C3D allows us to move this curve, I mean, move the surface, offset the surface, just until the um, fillet starts to reach the top. And we can get quite small. There's some flickering in there, but we're, in general, works pretty well. Um, and each operation is taking about 35 milliseconds, which is not bad. Now, the problem is once we start adding a more complex um, fillet situation, now C3D is totally stuck. None of these faces can move. These faces, which are independent, can still move, but these are basically stuck. So here we have um, just a little micro prototype of plasticity using the parasolid kernel. Um, if we repeat the same experiment, you can see that we get far more um, space to offsetting the sphere. There are limits, of course, um, because at some point the fillet can't be reapplied. But the other thing is once we start having a more complex um, topological situation, Parasolid continues to succeed in areas that um, that C3D simply won't. I mentioned that C3D is a Russian company. Um, I'm very satisfied with their product, although the direct modeling features could be better. But when the war in Ukraine started three months ago, I decided I needed to explore the alternatives. As an American, and plasticity is incorporated in the United States, it's very difficult to do business with Russian companies right now to say nothing of the kind of moral issues. So here's a model one of my users made a few months ago. It's a, it's a wheel, obviously, and so here I'm filleting one of the treads of it. Um, you can see that it's fairly fast to do that. If you look at these, let me do this one more time. If you look at the graphs in the lower right, um, 71 milliseconds, it says there, that's how long it takes for C3 to compute the blend, and the 26 milliseconds is how long it takes to um, incrementally facet only the faces that have changed and do that in parallel. C3D in general is a very fast geometry kernel that supports a lot of concurrency. Now that said, I did a ton of performance optimization to make that work. I'm uh, object pooling the objects to avoid copying stuff. I have thread pools to 
facet uh, faces in parallel. I do my own incremental faceting because C3D doesn't provide that by default, etc., etc. So I use this wheel as a sort of benchmark when comparing C3D to ASUS and to Parasolid. Here's actually the source code I use to uh, load the wheel, facet it, um, apply the blend, incrementally facet the things that have changed, undo uh, undo this to simulate like a user event loop where they're adding a larger and larger fillet. Um, so ASUS has great direct modeling, probably the best API and the best documentation of any of the geometry kernels. But in this benchmark, it's by far the slowest. Um, anyway, it's really hard to compare like apples to apples, but suffice to say Parasolid is twice as fast. And for Plasticity's goals, which are interactive operations, I want 30 frames a second, so that means 15 milliseconds for a typical operation and 15 milliseconds to incrementally facet the results and present it to users. Okay, so what is the conclusion? Well, I've spent like two, three months evaluating Parasolid, ASUS, uh, compared to C3D, even looking into some open source alternatives like Open Cascade, and there's not one best geometry kernel. They all have pros and cons. Um, Parasolid is going to be, for the most part, the fastest and with the best direct modeling, but it's expensive as hell, and I don't have a good solution for getting step in and out of Parasolid at the moment. Um, some things like bad APIs and stuff are just superficial problems, and I don't really care about them. Now, uh, next is ASUS. Like, nice API, good documentation, great direct modeling. I can definitely make something with ASUS that would be just as good as Fusion 360 for concept artists. It is inexpensive. There's a good step import export situation, but it's too slow to support uh, the kind of interactive operations that I want. I mean, Space Claim kind of makes do, but Space Claim is pretty slow. Um, and C3D, you know, I like it a lot. And like, it really is this inexpensive one-stop solution for getting a decent geometry kernel with good step import export. Um, it has a nice API, it's fast, it has fine grain locking for concurrency uh, friendly programming, but the direct modeling code is just not good enough. And there have historically been a lot of defects. I'm They fixed a lot of them, but it has been frustrating. But the reality is it's a risk for me and my company to be in business with a Russian supplier. It's I can't send money directly to Russia anymore. Um, and so, Okay, so now you're, you want to know, like, what the hell am I going to do? And I think I'm going to sign with Parasolid. And that's going to mean that plasticity is going to be significantly more expensive. It's going to be at least $100, if not more, when I launch. Um, and it's going to be a huge multi-month project to port my code to Parasolid and deal with all the crazy bugs and all the bullshit of writing C++. And, uh, and the upshot is going to be that plasticity is going to easily be as good in terms of direct modeling as Fusion 360. I really believe that. Even though Parasolid is not perfect and Parasolid has bugs and limitations too, it's just as good as Fusion. It has just as many um, powerful features, if not more. and. I think that's important to me. I want real uh, pros who are used to the best direct modeling capabilities um, to not hesitate to use my software. And I just hope that I can make this work as a business, that uh, the users are going to be on board to pay a little bit more to have a really awesome premium product that isn't going to hesitate to have the best features. and. Over the long run, this means that I'm going to be able to have cooler surfacing functionality. Um, you know, I'll take some influence from uh, from Alias as well once I've got some of the basic solid and curve modeling stuff working well. And I'm excited for the future with Parasolid, I think, I hope. I'm also very nervous and I'm very scared to sign this contract. So anyway, that's it. Thanks for your attention today.